presence. Come on. And we wait on you. We came here to worship him. We wait in your presence. Oh, and we wait on you. Yandele, 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 la mama, deba. Oh, ele, mama. Zele mama ndoko ndeke zere mama ndole yama mama zoro mama zeke umaya ndo randere ya mama ore ya mama nde ya kora kia mande lere ya oh we wait on you Lord we wait we wait we wait on you. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. The song says we are waiting on the Lord. Hallelujah. And they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. I don't know what you came here to do. Hallelujah. But I came here to give him the glory. Hallelujah. And God, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Ah, do you feel your strength coming on? Begin to worship him. Hallelujah. I want to thank you this morning. This is the first Sunday in uh, April. Thank you. I thank God uh, this morning that we are here. What an amazing song. Thank you, Pastor. We wait on the Lord. Hallelujah. And we thank God this morning. For you, those that are on the stream this morning, we want to thank you. Those that are on YouTube, Facebook, and the other streams, we thank you, especially the regular subscribers. We want to say on behalf of the pastor and the entire congregation, we say big thank you to you for always taking the time to tune in to this uh, 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 channel or this stream. Um, secondly, those that are joining for the first time, we say welcome yeah. to New Solid Rock Church Ministry, a church on fire, uh, uh, winning souls for Christ. Hallelujah. Uh, we want to say thank you for tuning in if this is your first time, but we know you're going to come again. And the visitors, you guys, you look beautiful. Those that are here this morning, you guys are looking so beautiful. Give yourself a clap, offering. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad. I don't know what you came here with. I don't know what you came here for. But as you enter into the gate, the Bible says, enter into the gate with thanksgiving. And into his court with what? With praise. Shall you shout hallelujah? Oh, we thank God. On this note, I want to welcome our mother, Dick Desbeck, to bring us the scripture and the prayer. Amen. Good morning, on Communion Sunday. And Jezebel called on the God as Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that then hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep, keep me from the evil, that if my night grieve me, and God grant me that wish he requested. Please, can we bow our heads? Please, God, grant, grant me the wishes for everybody in the church right now. Yes. Yes. I bless our pastor and our co-pastor yes. and our, our, our elders and our people that's online and ones that's coming online. Yes. And in Jesus' name, I have one more second. Whew. 
Thank you, Jesus. That's all I could say this morning. It's been a tough week for me. I know I'm supposed to be saying them first, but thank you. Thank you. And now I want to introduce our pastor, Pastor Terrence Melvin. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Come on, let's give, give, let's give the Lord a praise this morning. Amen. And certainly we honor the presence of the Lord and we thank God for Deaconess Burke. Let's give God some praise for Deaconess Burke. Amen. Amen. She is an encouragement. Amen. To all of us to continue to persevere. And we thank God for his presence in, in this building on this morning. Praise team, y'all, 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 y'all doing right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Mr. Leonard is going to be pleased. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. But all to the glory of God. We thank God for such a beautiful day. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. So many people are looking forward to seeing the uh, solar uh, eclipse on tomorrow. That's not going to compare to anything when Jesus cracks the sky. Y'all can have that. <clears throat> I'm going to be inside in my house with the blinds closed. <laughs> glory to God. But when that trumpet shall sound loud, glory to God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, and then we, I, I want to see him. Somebody say hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We do honor this morning the presence of the Lord to our co-pastor who's looking so lovely. I'm, I meant to comment on last uh, Easter Sunday how beautiful she looks. And so I praise God for her. We'll be celebrating 44 years uh, of marriage on this coming Friday. And uh, we'll be celebrating 49 years of just being in love. Amen. So I thank God. That was good, fellas. That, that was good. That was good. <laughs> Amen. That was good. Well, we praise God for you. Let's go to the word of God. Amen. On this morning, we're going to be reading from the gospel according to St. Luke. Chapter 6, verses 6 through 11. And uh, if you find that you need more information on this, this is also going to be found in your Sunday school two Sundays from now. Praise the Lord. But Luke chapter 6, verse 6 through 11, it says, And it came to pass also on another Sabbath that he entered into the synagogue and taught. And there was a man whose right hand was withered. And the scribes and Pharisees watched him, meaning Jesus, whether he would heal on the Sabbath day that they might find an accusation against him. That's right. But verse 8 says, but he knew, somebody say he knew, <laughs> their thoughts. See, the Lord knows the thoughts of your enemies. Glory to God. So you don't have to respond to them at all. God's got you covered. He says, but he knew their thoughts and said to the man which had the withered hand. He says, rise up and stand forth in the midst. And he was obedient. He arose and he stood forth. Verse nine says, then said Jesus unto them, I will ask you one thing. Now, the man is standing there. His hand is withered. It is on the Sabbath day. He's in the temple. Glory to God. And Jesus asks him to stand, and he stands. And he's standing there before all of the people. But Jesus is talking to those that were around him, the scribes and the Pharisees. He asks them a question. He says, is it lawful on the Sabbath days to do good or to do evil, to save life or to destroy it? And looking around about upon them all, he said unto the man, Jesus is bad. I just love Jesus. Jesus, it's like, he's like saying, okay, so uh, what y'all want me to do? Is it, is it better for him to stay in his condition? And he's looking at him. Y'all say something, because anything you say is going to be wrong. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. <clears throat> That's why you don't have to say nothing. Just hold your peace and let the Lord fight your battle. Because if you open your mouth, whatever you say is going to be wrong. And whatever they said to Jesus was going to be wrong. He says, is it lawful on the Sabbath days, verse 9, to do good or to do evil, to save life or to destroy it? 
Looking round about upon them all, he said unto the man, Jesus is bad. He says, stretch forth thy hand. And the man didn't look around. He ain't wait for no olive oil. He ain't come up front. He went. <coughs> <laughs> and his hand was restored whole as the other. And they were filled with madness. If you want to make the devil mad, if you want to make your enemies mad, get blessed. <laughs> Allow the Lord to heal you. Amen. Y'all were talking about blessings in Sunday school this morning. Let the Lord bless you with a new house, new car. Somebody say hallelujah. You ain't got to say nothing. Just live right. Hallelujah. Glory. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Oh, glory to God. And they were, y'all made it hot up in here. Glory to God. And they were filled with madness and commune one with another what they might do to Jesus. So just understand, because you're being blessed, the enemy is scheming to find out what they can do to sit you down. And my subject this morning is man with the withered hand. But the command or the theme is this, stretch forth your hand. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Stretch forth your hand. Now keep your hand in front of them because I don't want you to slap nobody, all right? Stretch. <laughs> amen, amen. So to give you background on the text, Jesus was now in full swing with his ministry. He was preaching and teaching everywhere. The blind were receiving their sight. The lame were walking, the deaf were hearing, and the, those that couldn't speak were speaking. Isn't it something to think about when you analyze all of the major healings? And I know y'all talked about that in Sunday school. Sunday school is really good. They all had something to do with the physical parts of the body, which was symbolic of the body of Israel. How through their religious leaders, they had become spiritually sick. You can be physically well, but you're spiritually sick. But then also you can be spiritually sick and then physically sick as well. Sometimes when you are spiritually sick, it will affect, not all the times, but often it will flare up in the physical conditions of your body. Mm -hmm. You see, the leaders of Israel, <clears throat> the scribes and the Pharisees and the priests had become so legalistic that they thought more of a day and their animals than they did the people of God. And anytime we as children of God give more attention to laws and rituals and ignorance to the grace of God and, and neglecting the mercy of God, <clears throat> we're going to go through something. Sickness will invade our bodies. Amen. Amen. If anybody ought to be walking in good health and strength, it should be the child of God. Somebody say hallelujah. <clears throat> if anybody ought to be walking in favor, wisdom and understanding, it ought to be the child of God. Yes, sometimes sickness comes to affect our lives just because of life's circumstances. You can't help it. You can't fight heredity sometimes, but God is able to heal. Somebody say hallelujah. The Bible says, it does say that time and chance happeneth to us all. So sometimes things happen not because you just got saved. They were going to happen anyway. But the good thing is that you're saved. And if it was an accident meant to take you out, then you're going straight to heaven if you know the Lord. And if you don't, you know, hell is really hot. And it is eternity. <laughs> Amen. We often don't know why good people get sick, but they do. But when they do, they are in the hands of God. And it is God then through their condition, he conditions us to fast and pray on their behalf. Often it is through the sickness of others that the Lord will strengthen you. He's got them if they know the Lord. He's got them. But sometimes it is about you. So then he allowed it so that he would get the glory out of the situation. And because you were patient and endured the condition, if he doesn't deliver on this side, rest assured, if you're a child of God, there's a crown and a reward waiting for you in heaven. Now, now that ought to give, give God some praise right there. 
Glory to God. So it was that Jesus was doing good. Jesus was doing what Jesus does. He shows up and people either receive him or they reject him. So stop thinking if, if they rejected Jesus, <clears throat> what makes you think everybody going to love you? Jesus was perfect and they didn't love him. We're full of flaws, so everybody's not going to like you, want to be around you. Glory to God. So get over it. You're a child of the king. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. You're kingdom's kid. You're royalty. Somebody say hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Jesus had, uh, had been run out of his own hometown of Nazareth. He'd been run out. The Bible says that there were very few folk that were healed. Amen. The great religious leaders of that town of Nazareth had taken him up to the top of the hill and would have killed him if he hadn't exerted his power and authority and simply walked through the crowd. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you got to walk through it. Tell him again. Say, you got to walk through it. Tell him one more time for the Holy Ghost. Say, you got to walk through it. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. When it is your time, it is your time. When it's not your time, <clears throat> it's not your time. And I don't know what some of you are dealing with this morning. It may seem like folk are, are trying to drive you crazy or kill you one. But be like Christ and exert your power and authority and walk through the crowd. Somebody say hallelujah. <clears throat> you see, God has a way of hiding you, glory to God, in the midst of the crowd so that you can walk through it. The enemy is looking for you and you are right under their nose, but they can't see you because the anointing of God not only destroys the yoke, but the anointing of God will cover you. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm covered, I'm covered, I'm covered. Oh, hallelujah, I'm covered, I'm covered. Don't you know the covering of God, hallelujah, or the cloaking device of God is better than that of the, well, I like if you're a Trekkie, of uh, the Klingons in Star Trek or the Russian subs. God can hide you from the enemy. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, say, God is hiding me from the enemy. Okay, somebody say, hide me, Lord. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, David said in Psalm 91, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high God shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. He says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. He is my fortress. He is my God. In him will I trust. Somebody say, Lord, hide me. Come on and give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 3 says, he shall surely deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Some of y'all are trapped this morning. You're in situations or circumstances that it seems like you just can't get out of. But the Lord wants you to know that the snare is broken and you are a as the bird out of the snare of the fowler. Somebody say, Lord, hide me. Verse four, he says, he shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Somebody shout, hide me. He says in verse five, thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night. Nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Somebody say, Lord, hide me. He says, a thousand. 
thousand shall fall at that side, that side. Some of y'all don't have a thousand. You just have one and a half people, a tall person and a short person coming after you. But he said that a thousand shall fall at thy side. And if the enemy tries to intensify his attack, he says, and 10,000 will fall at thy right side, but it shall not come nigh thee. Come on and give God some praise. Everything is going on around you. You can see it. But God is saying it shall not come nigh thee. Grandmama and them left this life because of cancer, but it shall not come nigh thee. The other folk were out of, out of cast out of their homes and lost everything, but it shall not come nigh thee. Come on and give God some praise. Woo! Somebody say, Lord, hide me. Woo! Glory to God. Y'all calm down. Somebody is about to be delivered this morning. Say, Lord, here I am. Deliver me. Mm. Back to the text. Y'all calm down. Stay with me now. So Jesus now moves. Y'all need some water? <clears throat> Jesus now moves his ministry to Capernaum, which is a city where thousands of people have come for many reasons, but more importantly, they've come to see Jesus. Yes, people will come from miles away to see a miracle. But God is saying that you don't have to travel so far to see a miracle. You are a miracle. You can be a miracle. Somebody say hallelujah. Folk will use their leave. They will catch the bus or the train or the plane. Or in Jesus' time, they will walk a mile to see a miracle. Oh, we would only have this kind of passion <clears throat> for miracles today. But many of us, instead of believing God for the healing, will try to over the counter, uh, or use the stuff over the counter. Glory to God. Before we will add an additional minute of prayer. Amen. To our prayer time. Try prayer first. See if prayer works. I tell you, pray four hours a day, just three times, uh, four hours, three times, every four hours, just three times a day. Try it. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. All right. Just, just try God. Look at your name. Say neighbor. neighbor. Try God. Try God. Amen. 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 You see, many of us would rather use our leave well, not many of us. Some of y'all might. Y'all, some of y'all ain't got no leave. <laughs> I'll tell that. <laughs> many of us, however, would rather use our leave, fight traffic, ride public transportation, deal with a receptionist or an office assistant at the doctor's office that had a bad night because Bobo didn't come home again. Spend an hour or two waiting in the doctor's office or in the urgent care area reading magazines that are six to 12 months old, if they still have them. Looking at the reality shows only to find out this brother is not the baby's father. To see a doctor and give them your insurance card, copay, write down on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper all your family business all your personal and financial information only for them to tell you to go home and get some rest and get this prescription filled. I could have done that myself. Bump all that. Give me Jesus. Somebody say hallelujah. Jesus is, is, is where the anointing is flowing from right now. I want to be where Jesus is because he is the great physician. There is more healing in the hem of his garment than in a bottle of Tylenol. And if I could but touch him, I know that I'll be made whole. So it was that people were in the city to see Jesus. They were looking for him. The Bible says in verse six of our text, and it came to pass also on another Sabbath that he entered into the synagogue and taught. Okay, I want you to follow me now. Where did Jesus go? He went into the synagogue, all right? The synagogue, which is a Jewish house of worship, often having facilities of religious instructions. Whenever Jesus went into a city, he would go to the synagogue, the house of worship, and he would wait and be next in line to teach whatever the subject was for that day. 
And I don't know about you, but I don't come to church to see you, really, I love you, or to socialize with you, although we can, you know. But I'm happy to see your face and happy to hear your testimony, but the main purpose for me coming to church is to worship the Lord corporately with you. Somebody say hallelujah. <clears throat> Look at your neighbor, say neighbor. Will you be my worship partner? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I see, I, 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 y'all pretty much sit on the same seats every Sunday. So you might as well clap together, shout together, and sing together. Somebody say hallelujah. And, and if you come to church and don't see the person that normally sits next to you, give them a call. Somebody say hallelujah. You get everybody else's number, get that number. <laughs> I'm almost through. <laughs> but the main purpose for me coming to church is to worship the Lord corporately with you. I need also to see my doctor, and his name is Jesus. <clears throat> now, I can see him at home, but it's a lot more effective when I come to church and see him and worship him corporately because as he begins to bless you, I then know that he's in the building and that I am next in line for a miracle. Somebody shout hallelujah. But if I stay home, I don't know if he's next door or not because they partied all night long. They got Miller beer bottles in the trash can. How do I know? Because I'm nosy like that. Somebody say hallelujah. But when I come to church and I see you begin to clap and I see somebody else begin to clap, I know he's in the building. And I'm next in line for a miracle. Tap somebody and say, neighbor. Say, I'm next in line for a miracle. Come on and give him praise. Woo. Woo. Glory to God. I remember one of my first encounters with, with Pentecostalism. I went to this church with co pastors It was a Friday night service, Elder Monier. It was a Friday night service. And they, they were singing some of the fastest songs. You know how my rhythm is. They were boom, 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 boom. And they were going for it. And I was, I was all in amazement. And the next thing I know, <clears throat> people started jumping up and down and shouting. And then I was looking at the uh, four people in, in the row in front of me. All of a sudden, the spirit hit them. They all got up in, in unison. They got up, they turned, and they, boom, boom, they, they went for it. And the next thing I know, I don't know, because the Spirit hit me. <laughs> Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody give God some glory. Say, Lord, touch me. Yeah. <laughs> That's the kind of church I'm talking about having. I, you know, I, yeah, okay, let's get back to the subject. Glory to God. Y'all so emotional. <laughs> Glory to God. Jesus, he still makes house calls. When he went to the house of Zacchaeus, he went to seek and save. Zacchaeus was up a tree, but he went to his house. When he went to Peter's house, he saw Peter's mother-in-law sick of a fever, and he healed her. When he went to the house that had the wedding in Canaan, y'all were talking about that wine this morning, and we missed Sister uh, Elder Goodwin. I know she would have had a lot to say on that one. He turned water into wine. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. And Elder, Elder said, he said, you don't know if it was this, that. He said, that don't matter. Wine is wine. <laughs> oh, glory to God. He went into the house of sinners. He was ridiculed by the publicans. And the sinners, he was ridiculed and criticized by them as well. But when he went to the synagogue, the place of worship, the place of instruction, the Bible says that there was a man whose right hand was withered. In the place where you think that the power of God would be the greatest, there was a man whose right hand was withered. And I tell you, church, I want New Solid Rock to be the kind of church that if you come in with a withered hand, the moment you step across that door seal, you'll receive your healing. Somebody, glory. In the place where you would think that sickness would not have dominion, there was a man whose right hand was withered. 
while everyone else was standing around on the outside. This man was in the house, but his right hand was withered. Where are you standing? Where are you seated this morning? Are you on the outside or are you on the inside of the house? The right hand, the working hand, the greeting hand, the fellowshipping hand. His right hand was withered. When you read the gospels, you don't see where there was any paralysis necessarily in his arms, but it was all in his hands. What what was it that withered his hand? What is it that's withering your working hand? That's preventing you from doing what God wants you to do? That is pre preventing you from being the kind of father and mother that God wants you to be? Is your right hand, has it been withered? The withered hand deprived of life and use. The withered hand, it lacked the circulation the vital powers. The withered hand, it was slightly shorter than the other. And no doubt this man would try to conceal it so that others wouldn't ostracize him. What are you trying to conceal? What are you hiding? What is it about your hand that you don't want anybody to see, that you don't want anybody to know, but you see it every morning when you wake up, you see it every night before you go to bed. The withered hand, it was his pain. It was his public mark of embarrassment. Was he born this way? Was it an accident on the job? Was he attacked or, or mugged or something? There are some withered hands in this building this morning. The circulation of the anointing of God has been cut off to your hands. And in the spiritual sense, the anointing is no longer flowing. You have that withered hand. Your past pains and griefs and misfortunes have caused you to shy away from people. I'll get to know you, but I have my limitations. Because if you get too close, you'll know my secret. You'll know my story. You'll see my hand, the withered hand, parts of your life that are unusable, aren't able to fulfill its purpose. The withered hand, what caused you to dry up and become so bitter? Was it unfulfilled dreams or unanswered prayers? Was it because you paid more attention to the needs of others than taking the time to minister to yourself. The withered hand. You can't hold on to the one you love with just one hand. You need to put both your hands around them, but your hand is withered because it. when you see, see that withered hand, they realize that there is weakness in your body. You can't protect your family and maintain your job and your sanity with just one hand. Your body, hallelujah, your life, Life is out of balance because your right hand is withered. And just like this man this morning, you were in the house. But instead of people ministering to your needs, they're more concerned about arguing the doctrine of the Sabbath day. Somebody say hallelujah. This man, as he sat in the synagogue, he was ignored by the religious leaders. He was ignored by family and friends. They argued the Sabbath. They would rather save a sheep on the Sabbath than allow for the healing of this man. But you've got to admire this man because most of y'all would have left and tried to find another church. But he stayed there because Jesus was in the house. Somebody shout hallelujah. It's not about the place of worship. It's about Jesus. It's about your faith in the Lord. If I meet him on the street, he's able to heal. If I meet him in the church, he's able to heal. Oh, if you've got a withered hand, God wants to heal this morning. People thought
thought of him and treated this man as a write-off on the books of life. Have you ever been there where people made you feel like a bad debt because your hand is withered, but this didn't stop the brother from coming? Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, don't let your pain stop you from coming. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody shout glory. Don't let somebody ticking you off stop you from being blessed. Just say, I forgive you, crazy one. Lord, heal me in the name of Jesus. This man, he kept on coming. Sabbath after Sabbath. The Sabbath day was made by God for man, not man for the Sabbath. In the Sabbath day, that's the day of rest. Somebody shout hallelujah. And God is telling somebody this morning to keep on coming. Everything ain't going to be right at at one time. Keep on coming. Somebody shout hallelujah. I've got good news for you this morning. And that's Jesus is in the house. Look at your neighbor and say neighbor. Say Jesus. He's in the house. The Bible says in verse 7 and the scribes and the Pharisees they watched him. They watched Jesus. They knew his pattern. Would he heal on the Sabbath day or not? Are you living a life worth somebody watching you to see if you really saved or not? Or do you cuss so much they know you're just going to cuss anyhow? Somebody say hallelujah. Do you still drink so much they know you're going to drink anyhow? They looking to see if Jesus is really real in your life. Somebody say hallelujah. Your deliverance may not have Happen all at one time, but yesterday I was drinking five martinis and today I only had two. Praise the Lord. Somebody give God some praise. And before you know it, I won't be drinking at all. No, nah, I'm not drinking now. I won't be drinking at all. <laughs> Because the Lord has come in and sanctified me. Somebody say hallelujah. Your enemies are watching you. And this is exactly what Christ wanted them to do. This man had been set up. Hallelujah. He wasn't, however, set up by the scribes and the Pharisees. He was being set up by God. This man, hallelujah, was going to be blessed by God. And I stopped by this morning to let you know it's a setup. The enemy has set you up in order to trap Jesus. But what he doesn't realize is that God has set you up to trap them. But to quote the words of Joseph, but as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good. I don't know your struggle, but God is going to turn your struggle around for your good. Somebody say hallelujah. Luke verse 8, I'm almost through. Jesus knew their thoughts and he said to the man which had the withered hand he said rise up and God is speaking to you this morning he's saying rise up and he says stretch forth your hand in the midst hallelujah can you imagine the thing he had been trying to keep to himself and not make a public spectacle of. God was now calling him to bring it forth. You see, God can't address the sin or the condition or the sickness until you bring it forth, until you acknowledge it. As long as you try to hide it, you're only fooling yourself. Somebody say hallelujah, because our God sees all, he hears all, and he knows all. Glory to God. So he said, stand forth in the midst and and the brother, he stood forth. And Jesus is saying to some of us right now, I know that your enemies have been watching you just to see what I'm going to do about your situation. But he says, I am the Lord thy God. He says, I know their thoughts, but I want you to rise up. I want you to get up. I want you to stand up. Your faith will give you the strength to stand. Somebody say hallelujah. If you're in the building this morning and you've had problems with your legs, God is saying, I want you to stand up. Come on and give God some praise. 
the Lord wants to heal you this morning. He's saying, stand up. Even when the enemy wants to see you fall. Then he challenged his enemies with a question. He says in verse 9, is it lawful on the Sabbath days to do good or to do evil, to save life or to destroy it? It was quiet. There was no reply. You see, the Lord can shut the mouths of our enemies. Now, Jesus had their undivided attention. The next verse says, and I like Jesus. He's a great orator. And looking round about upon them all. He said unto the man, stretch forth thy hand. And he did so. And his hand was restored. Oh. As the other. Can you see him? No more shaking. His fingers separating. Moisture coming back in his skin. No more dryness. No more pain. He could feel again. He could hold again. He could touch again. And the Bible says he did so. His hand was restored, whole as the other. Whereas only during service he could just pat and praise God. He could now take both of his hands and begin to clap. That's mighty pitiful. That's mighty pitiful. That's mighty pitiful. That's mighty pitiful. He's able to praise God. And this morning, God is saying, right where you are, stretch forth thy hands. This morning, let your hand be symbolic of whatever it is that is paralyzing your life whether it's sickness or whether somebody's hurt you or whatever it is, just stretch forth your hand. I know you haven't used your hand of faith in years, but he's saying stretch forth your hands. I know your enemies are watching, but stretch forth your hand. I know people have counted you out but stretch forth your hand. This man's hand was restored whole as the other. God says, if you stretch forth your hand, I will restore. I will restore all that the enemy has stolen from you. I will restore the joy that you lost. I'll restore your praise. I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. I will restore unto you the joy of your salvation. Stretch forth your hand. He didn't use any olive oil. He didn't lay hands on the man. He just gave him the command and he obeyed. He said, stretch forth your hand. And God is saying to you this morning, no matter what you're going through, that I'm able to heal. I'm able to deliver. I'm able to save. But you've got to be willing to stretch forth your hand. Somebody say hallelujah. Come on and just lift up your hands unto the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, we just lift our hands 
in the sanctuary on today, God. Father God, we give you glory. Father God, we give you honor and we give you praise now in the name of Jesus. No more paralysis. Oh God, he who the Son has set free is free indeed. And so, Father, by the raising of our hands, we decree and declare that we are free in the name of Jesus. We are healed. We are whole according to your word that by your stripes we are healed and we receive it now. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we give you praise. Every heart stand, 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 stand. Hallelujah. Glory. I'm going to ask you to do something that you don't normally do in the past three years. And if you feel uncomfortable about doing it, you don't have to do it. But I just want you to grab a hold of the person's hand standing next to you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. By joining hands, we've come into unity. Shake that hand. Uh -huh. Can you feel them shaking your hand? It's not withered. I can do all things. You can do, okay. You can do all things <laughs> through Christ that strengthens you. But remember, as you hold that person's hand, whoever's at the end of the road, lift your hands to the Lord. Amen. It's a chain reaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are all connected to God. Hallelujah. We are one body in Christ yeah, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Woo! He la, 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 glory. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before you now, God, joining hand with hand. God, we stretch our hands to thee. Oh, the song says, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. If thou withdraw thyself from me, God, where shall I go? God, we place our hand in your hand. We speak life now in the name of Jesus. Our hands are no longer withered, but they are healed. They can do all things through you, Christ Jesus, because we are healed and we are whole in the name of Jesus. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, we pray now for our brothers and we pray for our sisters. We pray for their healing. We pray for their deliverance. We pray for their breakthrough. We pray for their strength now. We pray, oh God, for the visions that you have placed in their heart that they will come to fruition. And God, instruct them, lead them, and guide them. Oh God, cause them to write the vision and make it plain in the name of Jesus. We hold the hand of our brothers and sisters. We hold their hands so they won't fall. We hold their hands so they know that they're never alone. We hold their hands, God, as we touch you, God, in the name of Jesus. Don't let us leave here the same way. I come to the glory. In the name of Jesus, we decree and declare victory now. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we pray. Put those hands together. Remain standing. Put those hands together. Come on. Come on and praise him. 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 Hallelujah. Come on and praise him. Praise him like you know you got the victory. Praise him like you know you're already healed. Praise him in advance. He inhabits the praises of his people. 
when you clap your hands, it confounds the enemy. When you clap your hands, it's a sign of worship. It's a sign of praise unto the almighty God. Oh God, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And let the King of glory come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. He's the King of glory. The Lord mighty in battle. God, we bless your name. Hallelujah. Now I want you to turn to the person standing next to you. Amen. I want you to look at him straight in the eye. Say, neighbor, neighbor. Do, you do you believe the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus Christ is, the is the Son of God? Wait for an answer. If they can't give you an answer, look at them in the eye and say, neighbor, neighbor. Believe, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus Christ. As, your as your Savior and ask him, and ask him to, come to come into your heart right now and forgive you of your sins and you shall be saved. Amen. Amen. Somebody say, Lord, save me. Lord, save me. Come on and give him praise. Hey. Glory to God. Oh, yeah. One second. One second. Hey, Amen. I'm getting so excited. We're opening the doors of the church. The doors is open. Amen. If you desire to become a part of this dynamic ministry, we invite you to come. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Where's Sister, um, Sister, um, Sister Feaster? Thank you. I'm bringing Sister Feaster up because she, if you ever have any problems or anything and need a prayer warrior, that's Sister Feaster. But Sister Feaster prayed with you. So I'm, I'm going to let you present this Bible to her, and, and then we're going to welcome you to the church. Amen. All right. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. Yes. Yes. My sister here accepted Jesus Christ as her Savior on the second Sunday of March. Yes. She is saved. Yes. Hallelujah. Belongs to God. Hallelujah. Got her place with God in heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. New life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sharon, I present this Bible to you as a roadmap, a guide to use yes. for, your, for God to guide your footsteps. Yes. Hallelujah. And you will get more and more out of this word. Get into Bible study as well, because Bible study will guide you along the way so you can have an understanding of what God is trying to say. We love you, and I thank God for her salvation. Yeah. Yeah. She's saved, folks. Yeah. Saved, folks. She is saved. This sister is saved. The angels in heaven are rejoicing over one soul. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Love you. <laughs> so we're going to invite you to come and welcome yeah. Sister Sharon. Yeah. Amen. Not only to the kingdom of God, but also to New Solid Rock yeah. Church yeah. Ministries. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. I I will enter his court with friends. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made. 
me glad. He has made me glad. That the Lord has made. Somebody say hallelujah. Okay, y'all can be seated now. <laughs> praise God. We thank God for Sister Sharon. And uh, we praise God for the move of his spirit in this place on today. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, say it's offering time. Amen. We praise God for this chance that we have. Amen. To worship the Lord in our giving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. The Bible uh, tells us that we should bring our tithes and our offerings into the storehouse. Amen. And we bring our tithes in reverence to God's word. And in so doing, <clears throat> he gave us his promise that he would rebuke the devourer for our sake, that he would open up the windows of heaven and pour us out so much that we would not have room enough to receive it all. We worship God in our giving, amen, in our offerings, amen. That, those are the seeds that we plant. And as you plant your seed, you will reap a harvest. If you sow sparingly, you will reap sparingly. But if you sow bountifully, you shall reap bountifully. And uh, just as an update, we praise God. We are now definitely at our halfway mark at $25,282. Somebody say hallelujah. <clears throat> And uh, we pray that we're going to have a special word from you on, uh, for you on next Sunday. So y'all just pray this week. Amen. Just pray. Somebody say, just pray. Amen. Amen. And so we just thank God. Let us pray over the offering. If, you, uh, if you're online, you can go to our website, nsrcm.org, and click on the giving tab there. Or even if you're in the building and can pick up a signal, you can use your iPhone or go on the app. Um, there are also envelopes in, your, in the seat in front of you that you can complete if you'd like to donate cash or by check. Amen. It's all good. Somebody say it's all good. As long as the check is good, it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I'm, I, you know, I'm crazy for the Lord. I, 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 I just, and Sister Sharon, she's just looking at me like, really? Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Amen. Let us lift our offering up to the Lord. Uh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we want to thank you today for all your many blessings. We thank you, Lord, for your presence in the service. We thank you, Lord, for how you're blessing a new solid rock and how you're blessing our building front project, God. We want to thank you. We give your name, the glory, and the honor. We ask, oh God, that you receive the offerings, oh God, uh, in the spirit in which it is given, and that you grant in increase. And we pray, God, that the givers will receive a harvest as they worship you now. We commend everything into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. Thank you, Pastor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God for our pastor this morning. Uh, he preached the word. Yes, he, he says, the man with the withered hand, stretch forth your hand. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank God for that word. This week, somebody is going to stretch forth their hand. Hallelujah. Amen. You have to do it by faith. He says, you are a child of the king. Do you believe that? If you believe that, you take your place as the child of king. And God is hiding you. Hallelujah. God is hiding you. Amen. Amen. On that note, uh, we're going to be... Uh, we hear the announcements. Um, we are in the month of April. Let me see by hands the birthday, those that were born in April. April birthday. April birthday. Nobody? <laughs> Darling. <laughs> Hallelujah. On that note, we will sing together in unison. Happy birthday to Sister Darling. Amen. Happy 
birthday to ya. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday, happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday. Thank God for our sister, Darlene. Uh, the following are the announcement. Uh, those that are first-time visitors, can I see by hand? If not, and this is your second time that you are here, you are family. Hallelujah. You are part of the new Solid Rock family. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, Sunday school are usually in person. We come here every 9.30 a.m. And we have Sunday school. Hallelujah. Yes. We also have intercessory every evening at 7 p.m. You can visit the church website for the conference call number and access code. Uh, you can join us also on noonday in the afternoon. You can take your lunch break and you can come and have some Bible study Amen. here. Amen. 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 And then on Thursday, Thursday at 7 p.m., it's also Bible study. Yes. Hallelujah. You need the word. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 And you can catch the church on the various, uh, uh, what is social media platform? Yes. The Facebook, YouTube, um, and the others. Hallelujah. Amen. Apart from that, if you have an Android or iPhone, you can download. Yeah. But if you have a flip phone, you can't. <laughs> if you have a flip phone, you can't. So get an upgrade so you can catch the church streaming on, on, on your phone. Hallelujah. If you are looking for a church family, a church home, where you can call, this is my church, where we all worship together. Hallelujah. Then you can see our pastors, uh, Pastor Mervin and Pastor Tanya about uh, joining, becoming part of uh, the church. Uh, on this note, we want to thank God for our sister. Where is he? The, the one that joined the church. We are so glad. Sharon. Sister Sharon, God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. On this note, we turn it over to co-pastor. Uh, okay. <laughs> she's going to be born again on her birthday. She's going to join the church. Okay. And she going to be a pastor. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. 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 We thank God for joy bringing people and through our sister, allowing her for God to use her to do that for the kingdom of God. Amen. 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 Yes. Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know Sherry, your sister. <laughs> you told me already. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we thank God for using you as a, as a, as an evangelist to bring all these people. Okay, okay. She has one more sister, and so let all of us join her in prayer that God's will be done. Amen. 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 On this note, I would like to invite our co-pastor to the pulpit for the uh, communion. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Elder. We're going to ask just the ministers if they will come. Go, Pastor. The elders. Amen. We want you to prepare your hearts and minds now to receive of communion on this day. Amen. 
I'll be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 through 34. It reads, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is a new testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat the bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that you come not together unto condemnation. And the rest will I set in order when I come. Amen. And on the night in which Jesus was betrayed, uh, he prepared a supper for not only his disciples to eat, but it was a commemoration of what he was about to do to give his life, hallelujah, on the cross. Hallelujah, not just to die, but to die that we may have a right to the tree of life. As the scripture said, as Pastor read it, he said, but let a man examine himself. And we're going to give you an opportunity to examine yourself before you take communion. Mm -hmm. This examination is to check yourself with the Lord and say, Lord, am I right with you? And Lord, whatever needs to be fixed in my life, God, fix it in the name of Jesus. So we're going to give you just a few seconds now to examine yourself, hallelujah, to assure yourself that you're right with God. Because he says that any, if any man eat and drink it unworthily, he eateth and drinketh damnation to himself. And neither one of us want to do that today. But we want to be in right standing with God. Let us bow our heads for a few seconds. Amen. Amen. Let us pray as Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. A amen. Jesus says, let us take, eat, because we eat of his body. He says, let us drink. And he says this, which is key, drink all of it, for you do it in remembrance of him. Amen. With our face to the rising sun, oh Lord, have mercy on me. Let us break bread together on our knees. Let us break bread together on our knees as we fall on our knees with our face to the rising sun 
Oh, Lord, have mercy on me. Let us break bread together on our knees. <clears throat> Let us break bread together on our knees. As we fall on our knees with our face to the rising sun, oh, Lord, have mercy on me. Let us break bread together on our knees. Let us break bread together on our knees. As we fall on our knees with our face to the rising sun, oh Lord, have mercy on me. On the night in which Jesus was betrayed, did we miss someone? Break bread together on our knees. Let us break bread together on our knees. As we fall on our knees with our face to the rising sun. Oh, Lord. Have mercy on me. Let us eat and drink together. Amen. Amen. By your partaking of this holy communion, you have demonstrated that you have peace with God. We instruct you as Jesus instructed his disciples, go out into the world and be wise as serpents, serpents and harmless as doves. Show forth the world that there is a life living in Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. We'll just give her a few moments. And wash away my sins Nothing but the blood of Jesus What can make me whole again Amen. We thank you for participating 
in our communion service as again be wise and serpent and harmless as doves. Do show the world that there is a life in Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for every good and perfect you. gift you've given unto us. You. And God, we ask your presence as an anointing as we leave this place. Dispatch your angels around us and keep us safe to our several destinations. Oh God, we ask you to bless the homes, bless the places that we go, oh God, that we may find peace and your spirit there. God, we thank you and we praise you for all things. These blessings we ask in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.